are God's. True wisdom, true might are the Lord's. Now, man in many cases think they have it all together. We, we compare ourselves or our military with another military and we think, you know, man, we're the best. We compare our dad can beat up your dad and, you know, as we were kids. It's always a comparison. But when you get to God, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. And yet so often we as Christians, we neglect to go to God who knows it all and we know he knows it all. So we're going to study that just a little bit today if we can. There's a little bit of feedback up here, Daniel, if you'd adjust that for me. Daniel chapter 2, and let's jump right in. God knows all and is able to defeat all. And by the way, friend, he will defeat all those who are against him. He will. One day you say, Pastor, do you get mad at people who are mean to you? And uh, this week we, we had uh, some people who uh, uh, called and said some things. And, you know, do we get mad at them? No. We love them. But we do warn them, God will judge. God will judge. God has to. Because either God is all love or God is love and justice. They, they work with each other. God would be unfair and therefore God would be unholy if he didn't judge sin. So that's why God sent his son because he loved us so much because he doesn't want you to die and spend eternity away from him. He wants you to come to him and submit to him and trust him as your savior and have a home with him in heaven forever. It's what he wants. God is good. Wisdom and might are his. This is a call for Christians to live victoriously. Several examples throughout the Bible, one of them we're going to read about today, who understood this thought, wisdom and might belong to God. Historically, in 605 B.C., Babylon defeated the mighty Egyptian empire, who nobody believed the Egyptian empire would fall. The Egyptian empire had been so strong for so long, and Assyria had come, and they were defeated, and uh, uh, eventually, uh, no, excuse me, Nebuchadnezzar with Babylon would come. They would be defeated. Nebuchadnezzar would come eventually to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem and Israel would be defeated. Not because, uh, not because God couldn't have protected them, but because the people had turned their back on God and God took away his hand of protection. And what happened after that point? Several people were taken prisoners. Several people were killed. The cities were ransacked and many people died as a result of it. But some of those individuals, the Bible alludes to the fact that Daniel and some of his friends were well-to-do, if you will, but they were godly individuals. They were taken to Babylon to serve the king of Babylon, to use the gifts they had. So in the beginning, they had to change these men from Jews to, to pagan people. And of course, we're going to see here in just a minute that Daniel did not fall for that. Our story, uh, Babylon would be, uh, would be used by God to defeat the Israelites. Daniel would go to Babylon and he would serve God for the next 70 or so years in a foreign country. And Daniel would see uh, God send Ezra and Nehemiah back to build the temple, to build the walls. Samuel would serve God for a long time. Samuel would watch as the empire would go from Babylon on to the world power with Cyrus and Persia. Daniel would be a part of all of that. Daniel would see all of those things from Babylon. Daniel stayed true. As far as we can tell, we don't really see anything Daniel faltered with. Now, is Daniel a sinner? Yes, every human is a sinner. But as far as we can tell, Daniel is one of the most godly people you can read about in the Bible. And one of the reasons for that was because he had a walk with God and he understood God has all the wisdom, God has all the might. So let's look at Daniel, how he accessed this wisdom and might from God. Look down at verse 20, verse 20 as we start today. Daniel answered and said, this is when Daniel's praising God, blessed be the name of God forever and ever. By the way, that's how it's going to be. We'll praise God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Isn't that wonderful? So you might as well start now. <laughs> if you're his child and you truly believe, why aren't you praising him? Why are you wasting your time complaining about everything? we got more important things to do. we got to praise the King of kings and Lord of lords. Now, let's think about this just for a moment. This idea of wisdom... Um, kind of confused me just a little bit because from what I was studying and what I understood, it was just found in the book of Daniel, this word, and in the book of Ezra. But uh, it's, it's found multiple times in the Bible, but I think it's more, the reason my 
website wasn't finding it and pulling it up. How I study is because it's the uh, more in Aramaic, which is really close to Hebrew, and uh, not to get to all the, the, the terms today, but this is the idea of wisdom from God. And this is something you and I are to desire according to Proverbs, according to the book of James. We're to desire wisdom from God, and the idea of might here is the idea of raw power. Raw power. Undefeatable power. So that's what we're talking about here. Wisdom from God. God's wisdom. And we're talking about raw power or might or strength from God. So let's look at how Daniel accessed the wisdom and might of God. Go back to chapter 1. Chapter 1. Let's see, number 1, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Daniel's dedication and testimony. Daniel's dedication and testimony. You say, Pastor, I want to I have the relationship with God that Daniel did. I want to have that great prayer life with God that Daniel did. Let's see what Daniel did to get that. Let's look down at verse, chapter 1. Let's look down at verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not what? defile himself. He was still under the law of God. He was still a Jew. God had given him a set of laws and a set of boundaries that he had to follow. Now, Nebuchadnezzar came in with the army. They took him captive. Most believe he was a teenage boy. They took him and his friends captive. They take him to Babylon. In most of our worlds, if we put this in our thinking, we would say, okay, God's failed us. God let us down. Things aren't going the way we wanted. We're in a bad place physically, spiritually, uh, emotionally, uh, financially. We're in a bad place. God's not holding up his end of the bargain, so I don't have to hold up mine. It's not how Daniel was. It's not how Daniel was. Daniel had to leave home. Daniel was taken from his family. Daniel's parents were probably killed. People were probably dead all around him. Daniel probably saw barbaric acts performed by the, the, the Babylonians, and yet Daniel does this. Daniel gets there. And they find the smart men, the, the young men, the men of prestige. They bring them in and they say, we're going to transform you from Jews into true Babylonians. And we're going to use you in our kingdom. This was one way. Uh, Babylon was so successful for many reasons. But this was one way they did it. They brought him over there. And they gave him food that he was told by God not to eat under the law. So he tells them, look at verse 8. What does he do? He purposed in his heart. He's not going to defile himself with the portions of the king's meat. Can I say this? We make a lot of excuses when we go through a hard time, don't we? Don't we? We're, we're good at that, right? We, something happens in our life, therefore we justify uh, sinning just a little bit. Because after all, God, if God really wanted me not to sin, he wouldn't have put me in this position. Not Daniel. Daniel said, no, 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 I'm not, I it's in my heart. This is something real to me. God's will, God's way, God's plan, God's desire, that's first and foremost, even in a foreign country. I want you to consider this. Under Daniel's dedication and testimony before God, he chose right over convenience. He chose right over convenience. Friend, there's a lot of things that are convenient. There's a lot of things that are enjoyable, but it doesn't mean they're right. It doesn't mean they're right. It doesn't mean they're taking you down a path that is clean and holy and righteous. He chose the holy over profane. Let me ask you a question. Everybody listen just for a quick minute and just tell me what you think. If Daniel would have compromised God's word, do you think there would have been a whole book about it? I don't think so. I don't know, and I, obviously I don't get into all this because God knew everything. God would have had a plan. God would have worked it out exactly how God wanted to. But do you think if Daniel would have compromised, do you think God would have used him the way he did for his life? No. You know why a lot of people aren't recognizing God has all the wisdom and God has all the might? Because they're compromising what they believe out of convenience. The world is getting farther from God. Therefore, we're getting closer to the world, but we're still farther from the world. But we're distancing ourselves from God because it's convenient. Friend, America does not uh, judge morality. The Bible does. I don't care if America thinks it's okay. I don't care if the politicians say it's okay. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. And it doesn't matter. I don't, I, it, it doesn't matter if it's convenient or not. You and I, you know, we ought to have. Uh, we ought to have. Uh, Biblical understanding of what God wants for us 
And we ought to stick to it in purpose in our heart. We're not going to defile ourselves. We're not going to walk away from God just because other people say it's okay or you're too old-fashioned. I've heard that quite a bit. No, no, no I'm just biblical. <laughs> just biblical. Now, there are some things you can be more old-fashioned minded about that maybe is more of something you want to do, and that's fine. But when it comes to biblical teaching, there's no old-fashioned about it. It's either godly and righteous and holy, or it's unclean and moral and impure. You know, there's no in-between. Friend, you and I have to dedicate ourselves, or excuse me, we ought to have a, a dedication to God, even if it's not convenient. The world has consistently told us how uh, we can and cannot define abortion. They use the word fetus, and little do they understand where that Latin word came from. They try to tell us how we can define marriage. They try to tell us how we can have church and when we can't have it. Right now, right now, right now, as we speak, this book is under attack. And one day, if God does not return this book, you mark my words, it's not going to be allowed. One day. Say, Pastor, that will never happen. Friend, it's happening right now. You understand there are some things that just because it's convenient and just because it would make my life easier, Daniel said, no, 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 I'm not stopping. I serve him. He's first and foremost. And some of us today need to stick our feet in the sand and we need to say, you know what? We're going to stand for truth. We're going to stand for righteousness, come what may. And as a family, we need to get together, mom, dad, and our kids, and we need to get together and shut off the phone and shut off the computer and shut off the TV and say, what are we willing to stand for? And we need to know. Husbands and wives, you need to be on the same page. What are we going to stand for? What are we going to put up with? How are we going to dedicate ourselves to God and God only? This was a man of integrity. Take your Bible to the book of James very quickly. The book of James. You say, Pastor, I want what Daniel had. I want this relationship with God. Well, Daniel was dedicated. Go to James chapter 3 very quickly. If you find Hebrews, that's one of the bigger books of, of all those little small books, the Pauline epistles, Peter. And uh, If you'll find Hebrews, it's right after Hebrews is the book of James. James chapter 3. Okay, James chapter 3. And I want you to see, this kind of, to me, defines Daniel. Look at verse 13. Who is a wise man, according to God... And endued with knowledge. So who's a wise man and endued with knowledge according to God among you? Let him show out of a good conversation. This is out of a good lifestyle. His works with meekness of what? Of wisdom. So Daniel is displaying, I know that wasn't written at the time, but God's thoughts, God's plans, God's goals have always been God understood. This was Daniel. He was showing out of a lifestyle that was putting God first. The, uh, he was a man of integrity. There are different definitions of integrity. Uh, one person said, if you invite a philosopher into the room and ask him what is integrity, he'll say, integrity is what you're like when no one's around. The next, you invite a businessman and ask him what is integrity. And he'll say, integrity is giving your word and keeping it. Finally, you invite a lawyer into the room and ask him what is integrity. He quickly goes to the windows, pulls down the shades and shut the door. And then he comes over and whispers, whatever you want it to be. <laughs> now, integrity is someone who stands for truth even when it's tough. Integrity is standing up for what's right even when others think it's wrong. Integrity is the idea of wholeness, completeness, and entirety. Okay, I want you to look at verse 13 of chapter 2. Go back to the book of Daniel. We're going to jump through some of these very quickly. Daniel chapter 2, look at verse 13, because I want to get to verse 20. If you're taking notes, I want you to write down Daniel's danger and Daniel's destiny according to man. Daniel's danger and Daniel's destiny according to man. We already saw Daniel's dedication. I hope you're dedicated to God. I hope you are. Let's look at Daniel's danger. Look at verse 13. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Daniel was in danger. According to man, Daniel's destiny would be death. Okay, what happened? The king had a dream. The king went to all the magicians and all the wise men and all the sorcerers in the area. And he said, fellas, tell me what my dream was. 
and they said, tell us what your dream, what you dreamed about, and we'll tell you the interpretation. He said, no, you tell me what I dreamed. And they tried to figure it out, and they tried to conjure it up, and then they had excuse after excuse after excuse. It appears Daniel and his men, his, his friends, they weren't there. So the king says, you know what, these guys are worthless. Why are we paying these guys? They're pathetic. You know, let's go kill them all. So he sends them to be slain, and they come to Daniel's house, and Arioch, the captain of the guard, he comes to Daniel and says, Daniel, uh, we got to kill you, man. You're, you're one of the group. And Daniel says, what, what's going on? What happened? And he explains to them the whole situation uh, down in verses 14, 15, 16. He tells them everything that was going on. So Daniel, I believe it was because, look at verse 16. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him what? Time. Listen, you know why I think Daniel could go before the king? I think Daniel had a good reputation. I do. I think Daniel was a good man, a good guy serving God. He was a little different than other people, but man, he was a solid guy. So Daniel comes in before the king. He says, King, uh, you don't got to do this just yet. Let me go. Look at Daniel's confidence. Look here. L look at the end of verse 16. And that he would show the king the interpretation. So he goes to the king and says, hey, um, just give me a few minutes. I'll, I'll go talk to the Lord and God will help us here. You're being a bit hasty and a bit brash. He probably didn't use those words. And you know what the king said? Okay, I'll give you some time. Do you see Daniel's danger and Daniel's destiny? He's going to be killed. Listen closely. Daniel didn't ask for this. Daniel did nothing to deserve this. Amen? Does everybody see that? It wasn't like Daniel was over here stealing and robbing and doing all these bad things. No, no, no. Daniel just didn't even hear about it. Daniel didn't even deserve this. But he was in danger. But Daniel had assurance and confidence that God would help him. Notice this pattern. Daniel was dedicated to God. Daniel had a walk with God. Daniel trusted God. Therefore, when a problem came, do you see what happened? Daniel was confident that God would find a way out. When you're living wrong and you're living a lifestyle that's wishy-washy and kind of half in, half out, and then all of a sudden a problem comes and you go to God and you're wondering, hey, God, I thought you were there. I thought you never left me. I thought you never... But when you serve Him and you're right and living holy and pure and clean, it's so much easier to go to Him. That's why you live a lifestyle that is moral, that is clean, that is pure, that is right. That's why you live and treat other people the way God told you to treat them. You do things in private when nobody sees because you're a person of character and you're dedicated to God. And then when that problem comes, it's so much easier to deal with. Notice how Daniel goes. Daniel is about to be killed. There is no way out for Daniel unless God intervenes. Uh, have, you, have you been there? Have you been there? There's no way out for me unless God shows up. There's no other options. No one else knows what to do. If God doesn't do this, it's not going to happen. That's a good place to be, by the way. There's nothing wrong with trusting God. Some today, I think we do really well. Uh, we may need to dedicate ourselves to the Lord and say, I'm going to live for Him in pure, righteous, holy, because I'm not going through that major problem now, but I know one day I will be. Because all of us go through things, right? It's, it's much easier when you're close to God to take to Him that problem than when you're far from Him due to sin and you're trying to run to Him and make up all these wrongs, if you will. That's a terminology I hear all the time. I'm so glad God is a God of grace and mercy and He'll still be there. Well, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I want you to see thirdly here this morning, Daniel's distinction from others. What set Daniel apart? And I think you're going to be shocked. Because I'm not going to talk about his church attendance. I'm not going to talk about his, um, how many people he told about Jesus, how many doors he went knocking on. I'm not going to tell you about, did he, was he a good uh, tipper at the restaurant. We're not going to talk about those things. We're going to talk about something that was very personal between him and God no one else knew about. Look here. Look at verse, uh, verse 17, if you would. Daniel's distinction from others. Verse 17. Then Daniel went to his what? And he made the thing known to his friends, the other three, that would be made a bigger deal later on. He goes to them and he says, fellas, we've got to do something. Hey, fellas, let's sit around and talk about how bad, the, how bad Babylon is. Let's sit around and talk about how bad everything's going. Let's sit around. No, no, no. What did he do? In verse 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known. And look at verse 18. That they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows would not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. You know, we don't find here, and I'm not fully against this, I think this is okay, 
but we don't, that's why we use the prayer chains. I think it's important we, we spread our needs to other people. What I think is just, this is going to come out wrong, but I don't know how else to say it. We put it on there and make other people pray and then we forget about it. It blows, but don't put it on there just expect everyone else and you're not praying and talking with the Lord come on now that's not what it's for you be walking with him and then you get other people to walk alongside of you and pray for it anyway anyway that's a side note Daniel's distinction from others was he came together he told his men about it and they, his friends about it and they had a prayer meeting they didn't broadcast it all over Facebook and then forget about it. They went together and they said, you know what? Hey, let's get together. You know what would be a good thing in the church when we have a big need and a big problem? And this is what we need to be doing? We ought to get some people together and say, hey, can I talk to you about this? Yes. What's it about? Okay, this is the issue. Hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's have a big prayer meeting. Some ladies get together and say, you know what? I've got this issue. I'm struggling with this. Instead of going to everyone else about it, I want to come to you. And can we all just bow and pray together? Hey, maybe some men and some ladies get together and they say, Hey, you know what? Something crazy is happening in Israel. We need to get together and pray about it. Maybe we have a need in our family. We go to someone and say, Hey, we don't need to discuss this. We need to go to God about it. That's what Daniel does. Daniel is not all over gossiping about how bad the king of Babylon is and how he could do this to him and why his life was so miserable and why all this happened to him and woe is me. What he did, he'd been walking with God. He was dedicated. He was in a dire strait. And you know what he did? He goes to God and begs for God's mercy. What a, what a, what a thought. Isn't that the pattern for us today? Walking with him? dedicated to him, living a life sold out for him, the problem comes and we go to others and we say, guys, can you come pray with me? We're not going to sit here and discuss it and how bad my life is. This is my problem. Will you come and beg God for me? Let's all get together. Let's get together and pray and seek for the mercy of the God of heaven. Think for a minute. How many of you think that prayer time was pretty special? I kind of have this idea, it wasn't this. Hey, Hanani and uh, Michelle and uh, Azariah, hey guys, come in here. Hey, uh, what was the big, there's a chariot race today, right? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, the, the one won and that was really cool. Hey, you know, we're going to be killed. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's, yeah, you got any ideas? Yeah, I got one. Let's, uh, let's put it out there on the scroll, the Facebook scroll, and let's make sure everyone knows to feel bad for me. No, no, no. Okay, what, what else? What do you got? Hey, I, you know what? I got a good one. I think we ought to go around and tell all the guards what a bad leader they have. I know I'm being a little facetious and a little funny. But they get together and they said, no, let's pray for the mercies of the God of heaven. I'm not bashing face, but I think you should put your prayer request out there. I think you should. Don't, don't get me wrong. Please do that. I don't see everyone's Facebook stuff, so I'm not attacking you. Please don't misunderstand. But they get together. Do you know how powerful and passionate that prayer time was? Do you know it was more than just God? Help my situation. I'm going to die. I think it was them getting a hold of God, their creator. And I don't think it lasted for three to four minutes. The Bible doesn't tell us how long it lasted, but I think they went and they talked to God. And then from what I understand, from what I believe happened, Daniel went and just trusted God and went to bed. He put it in God's hand and then trusted him. He went to his friends to pray and seek the face of God. This is what made Daniel distinct from everyone else. You know what would be good? Let's not be categorized as weird people. Let's be categorized as praying people. Church, uh, we can all do that. I think we, I think we do. We've, I've had talks with people in the church recently. We need to be a praying church. Praying church. This is where Daniel was. This is what made him distinct from everyone else. This is what ought to make you distinct. And by the way, I hope I'll do that whether you do or not. That should be me. I ought to be a prayer warrior in the church. That should be you. You ought to be a prayer warrior in the church. I pointed this group, but I'll be this one and this one, right? I only have two hands. All of us. You see what made Daniel different? He sought for the mercy of the God of heaven. By the way, it's very interesting, some of the wording here. Uh, we don't have time to get into all the words. Uh, we need to go just a little farther. Would you bear with me? Look down at verse 19. Okay, so we see Daniel's dedication... Okay, that's where it starts. So if you're not dedicated to God, if you're not serving, you're not living holy, you're not living pure, not living righteous, not living clean, you need to do that. But as you do that, then you have danger. 
you have problems. And then we see your distinction is not to tell everyone else and make everyone else be on your side. Your distinction is you tell everyone else so they can join you in prayer as you seek God's will and God's mercy. And then you know what happens? I love this last one. Daniel's deliverer. Daniel's deliverer. It wasn't him. It wasn't his friends. It wasn't the spiritual leaders. It was God. Let's look at verse 19, would you? Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. I don't believe God does this the same way anymore. Uh, but Daniel, God comes to Daniel and he explains to him the dream. And he explains to him what it means. Now this was prophecy. We're going to read in verse 36 through 49. Don't get nervous. We're not going to do that today. But we're going to see it's prophecy. God is going to, through Daniel, Daniel's going to tell the king. After him, there's going to become another nation. And then another nation until eventually the nation of Rome and there's all this significance and all of that happened by the way all that worked out just the way God wanted you to but I want you to see Daniel's deliverer look at verse 20 Daniel answered and said blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his when you and I have really met with God you know what's going to come from that when we truly meet with God, you know what will come from that? God, you're amazing. What if God doesn't answer our prayer? When we've truly beseeched the mercies of the God of heaven, God will answer our prayer. It might not be what we wanted. But after that prayer, if we truly seek Him, if it's more than just something we do to fill time, if it is something we are seeking the mercy of the God of heaven... He promises to answer our prayer. You know what comes from when you really meet with God? Praise. Blessed be the name of God forever. God, thank you. That's what truly comes. That's what truly comes. Daniel's deliverer. You know what Daniel understands when he gets a hold of God? Wisdom and might belong to God. Wisdom is this idea of God imparted wisdom to me. This is someone, something no one else knows and can predict. This is something that is foreign to everyone else. And God allowed Daniel to see a small little glimpse of what was coming. For his purpose and for his glory, there's a reason for that. Uh, be careful about seeing visions today, okay? You might just have too much pepperoni pizza the night before, all right? Be very careful about doing some of that stuff, okay? Last night, I had too many raspberry-covered uh, chocolate things my wife brought home from Albany's. Glory be, but I had some dreams, okay? I'm not revealing those dreams to you, okay? That's not, the, that's not what we're talking about here. This was God-imparted wisdom. This is God-imparted wisdom. We need God's wisdom for our everyday life. Remember in James chapter 1, if any of you lack wisdom, how many of you lack wisdom? You ever need some wisdom? Okay, good, everyone's honest in here. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Daniel's prayer was far more than a casual request. It was a God without you. I don't know what we're going to do. I want you to see, not only he asked for God's wisdom, but God's might, this raw power. God, you have to help me through this. Only wisdom, only might, they belong to you. So I ask you this. Daniel acknowledges God's vast wisdom. Look at one more verse and we'll be done. Look at verse 23. I thank God and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me what? And what? God gave Daniel exactly what he needed for that time. Now listen very closely. You might be having, you probably don't have the same problem that Daniel was having, okay? You're probably not necessarily in a foreign country where people are trying to kill you, okay? We probably don't need to compare Daniel's problems with our problems. All we need to understand is we need to first of all be dedicated to God Almighty. We need to be serving and we need to be living righteously. We need to be living holy. If you need to get that straight, you get that straight today. Once you're dedicated, once you're righteous, then you're going to have a dilemma that's going to come. 
And when you're close to God, it's so much easier to talk to Him through that dilemma than when you're far away and you're repenting, you're coming back because a big problem's coming. And then after that, we see there's a distinction because we know who to go to. And then we recognize that God is our deliverer. Friend, wisdom and might belong to God. They are His. Have you sought Him for it? Because you need wisdom. You need His strength to carry on. How much time have you spent fixing the problem yourself? And how much time have you spent begging for the mercies of God? With a different lifestyle. I, I had no idea the events that would take place recently when I started reading through the book of Mark this week and something brought me to Daniel. I was going to be preaching from Mark chapter 6 and something brought me to Daniel. I came to this and I read that. I just became overwhelmed with this idea. Man's wisdom is nothing compared to God's wisdom. Man's strength is nothing compared to God's strength. So I ask you today, how badly do you need God? When was the last time you had a prayer meeting, you were with other people, where you actually got a hold of God? Honestly. I'm not saying you've had a big show and you had all these things. No, I mean, when did you just sit there and pray and talk with Him until you know He hurt you? Until you know His presence was felt. You were praying according to His will. Your lifestyle was clean. You were living holy. You were praying according to His will. You were loving Him. You were serving Him. You were begging for His mercy. When was the last time you had one of those real prayer times? I'm talking a real one. I'm not talking the one, two, three, pray after me. God is good. God is great. Thank you for the food. Right? I'm not saying that. When was the last time you had the real one? Daniel had it. And God showed up. And God's going to use Daniel from this point for another uh, 70 years. Whatever it is, the exact timeline. And Daniel's going to keep right. Heads bowed, eyes closed this morning. I believe this is something I have to work on. I believe this is something our church has to work on. Is God truly who He said He was? Does He have all the wisdom? Does He have all the might? Or do you? Or do you? Some are coming forward. Would you consider that? Some are going to come up. Some have sought their own wisdom lately. Some have sought their own power and their own strength. The instruments are going to play. Several are coming forward. Several. Do wisdom and might truly belong to God? Do they belong to you? Do they belong to that favorite author you have? Do they belong to that favorite singer you have? Or is it truly God? I'm going to ask you, does God have the wisdom in order to save you? Did God know what it would take and what cost it would cost Him in order to save yours and my soul? And the answer is yes. From the beginning, He knew He would have to send a substitute on your behalf. He would have to have someone die in your place so you could have His righteousness upon you. At 11 years old, I trusted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I recognized my sin. I was on my way to hell. Even though I was a good person, my dad was a pastor. I went to nursing homes and helped people out. We gave money to people. We did all good things. But I recognized I was a lost sinner. If you're here today and you'd say, Pastor Lang, there's never been a time and place in my life where I recognized I was a lost sinner on my way to hell. And I trusted Jesus' gift for salvation. You say, Pastor Lang, I don't know. Would you pray for me? All throughout the room, can I just pray for you? No one look around. It's nobody's business but you and God's. Right there in your seat. Pastor Lang, pray for me. Pastor Lang, pray for me. Just lift your hand so I can pray for you. I don't want to call you out. It's not my goal. I want you to know Jesus as your Savior. Right there in your seat right now, you can call upon Him. Many have come forward. You do business with God as long as it takes. We need some praying people in the church. We need people who seek the mercy of God. We need people who are passionate prayer warriors. Not our wisdom, not our might, not our strength, but God's. But God's. Take all the time you need. Do you trust Him? Do you trust Him? Heavenly Father, Lord, God, what a powerful passage of Scripture. 
Lord, I'm so ashamed. God, there have been times where I've had dilemmas and I've tried to figure them out. God, I've had problems and I've trusted my wisdom. I've trusted my strength. And God, I've neglected that you are the source of true wisdom and you are the source of real strength. And God, today, as Daniel did, we would not look for attention, but we would look to you as our Savior and as our Deliverer. God, I love you. Thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that we can know we have a home in heaven by trusting in your son, Jesus, who died in our place to give us his righteousness. In Jesus' name. If you would, please stand. Thank you for being here today.